Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, listen, uh, I always, always want to held people accountable. That is, when they screw up, I want them to admit it. And when I screw up, I need to admit it as well. We did this video right here where we talked about the non-compliance or the perceived non-compliance with ATF's pistol brace rule. And a lot of you pointed out that I was actually terrible with math, which is true. And like many lawyers, if we were good at math, we actually would have gone to medical school, not law school, and you guys all wouldn't be stuck with me. That being said, I'm going to go back. I'm going to correct the math for many of you who pointed it out. I'm going to correct the math. We're going to update the numbers. But ultimately, what we're going to talk about is this, which is how America is not complying with the pistol brace rule, even when you use the correct math. Okay, so the topic that we're talking about is really a mathematical update to this video right here where I had done this really good job of crunching numbers only to get to the very end and absolutely screw up crunching the numbers. So for those of you who want to geek out on that video, the link for it is down below. What we did is we started off with the premise that there was 20 million braced firearms, that half of them had been reconfigured, surrendered, or destroyed. I know these are crazy hypothetical numbers. It left us with 10 million eligible firearms for registration. Now we know from the ATF that there were 255,162 of these firearms registered during the amnesty period, roughly a quarter million. Now, what I did, and let's do it together here, is we took 255,162, divided it by 10 million, and that's right, we came up with the number of 0 0.0255162. Okay, now, where I totally screwed up then is I said, hey, that's 0.025% of the eligible firearms that were registered. Wrong. I need to multiply that number by 100. And so now to give you a much more accurate number, we believe that compliance based upon our very conservative estimates of the number of firearms that were eligible to be registered, we actually believe that the compliance is now around 2.6%. Okay, not 0.025%, but a whopping 2.6%. So the good news, ATF, is that there are considerably more Americans who have decided to comply with your rule. The bad news is, is that using our conservative numbers as to the number of firearms that were eligible to be registered, yeah, you're still under 3%. And remember, that's only if there was 20 million of these eligible firearms. If the number is closer to 40 million, well, I'm going to have you guys do the math because you obviously can all figure out how good I am at it. Now, to all my viewers who pointed out very constructively the bad math I had done, thank you very much. To all of you who decided to take this opportunity to tell me what a goddamn idiot I am, thank you very much. But let us also remember, I am a married man, so I do have somebody to remind me of that every day as well. So the bottom line is this, okay? We believe, using conservative numbers, that there is about a 2.6% compliance rate with the rule. Now remember, there is also three large groups of people, all the Firearms Policy Coalition members, all the Gun Owners of America members, and all the Second Amendment Foundation members, plus a much smaller group of named plaintiffs who are all enjoying the fruits of an injunction. So obviously there are millions of people who are outside the purview of this rule at that point. But that being said, that being said, no matter what kind of creative number we come up with, whether we try to come up with more creative numbers as to firearms that were altered, surrendered, or destroyed, or the number of firearms that actually existed that were eligible for registration, the bottom line is this. Ain't nobody complying with this rule, okay? Listen, you may have more questions about the pistol brace rule, about how to do correct math. I would only suggest you ask us the first part of the question. But if you do... Remember, you can always contact Washington Gun Law. And if you don't know how to do it, that information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Do better math and stay safe.